Let's add a custom advanced item to Minecraft. Minecraft modding courses with close to 100 topics ranging from custom tools and armor to custom block entities all the way to custom mobs linked in the description below. Oh, right. We find ourselves back in the once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom advanced item to Minecraft, meaning basically that this item is going to have its own custom item class, allowing us to do <laughs> all sorts of crazy things. Now for this, in the item package, we will make a new package called custom. This is not strictly necessary. I just like to, well, basically make this for organization purposes. And inside of there, we'll make a new Java class and we'll call this the metal detector item over here. One convention to follow is you want to end the class name with item so you know that this is an item. To start, we will extend this from the item class right here and we'll hover over this create constructor matching super. And in theory, we now already have a custom item class, but it doesn't do anything interesting at all. For more information on what you can do is you can start typing in override and you can see these are all of the methods that you can override. And if you override them, well, they basically get executed when certain things happen. You can also take a look at the item class itself when you middle mouse button click on this and then just scroll through and you can see Oh man, there are a lot of things in here that are very interesting indeed. One thing that might be interesting is the use on method. This is called when you use this item on a block or the use method when you right click without looking at a block. In our case, what I want to do is I want to right click with this item and I want this to basically look all the way down, all the way going through until bedrock. And if it finds an or block, then it should output that or block into the chat. That's all we want to do. And for this, of course, we need to use the use on method right here. This one. So we select this, press the tab key to autocomplete, and it will import the method. No issues whatsoever. The first thing we want to do is we want to return the interaction result success. This will just make it so that the right clicking also has the animation associated with it. And that just looks a little bit nicer. We then want to say if key context dot get level dot is client side and then this is extremely important we want to put in an exclamation mark here at the front negating the is client side meaning that when we're inside of this if statement we are only on the server very important then we're going to get the block pass this is going to be the position that we've clicked we're going to get this by saying p context dot get click position or click get click pass here in this case we will then get the player making sure we choose net world entity player over here and this is going to be the player equal to p context dot get player Awesome. We also want to make a boolean called found block. We're going to set this to false. We need this in just a moment. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a for loop and the for loop looks like this. Basically, we will just go through from the block that we've clicked all the way until Y level zero and then 64 beyond that because, well, of course, the world now extends to minus 64. To do that, we're going to get the block state that we've clicked. This is going to be the state and this is going to be p context dot get level dot get block state at the particular position that we've clicked but we're going to extend below whatever the I over here is. So as this for loop loops through, we're basically going to go one block down each time and we're going to have to evaluate that particular block. So we're going to say is valuable block passing in the state over here and you will see that, well, wait a second, the is valuable block method, that doesn't exist exactly because that we have to create ourselves. So we just hover over this, create that method over here and let's see. So it returns a Boolean. So what we just want to check is, hey, is this state over here? Is this a certain thing? For the sake of argument, we can say is blocks.iron ore here, for example. And there we go. Now, if I right click on a block and any block below that is iron ore, the first iron ore that we find for this, it would be true. And then we could do something. And you can, of course, expand this by saying an ore here or state is blocks.diamond ore. And you can continue this however much you like. But in a future tutorial in the tags one, we'll actually see how we can make this much easier and much more expandable. But for now, when a valuable is found, I literally just want to output valuable coordinates. What do I need for that? I'm going to need the position that we've clicked. Position click dot below with the I over here. I will also need the player and I will also need the state. And we're just going to get the block from that. I also want to make sure that found block is equal to true. And then I want to immediately break out of the for loop over here because, well, we're, we're done. We, we don't need to do anything else. Except, of course, create the output valuable coordinates method over here. Once again, just a method and it already creates for us the method signature that we want. That is awesome. We're just going to rename this to block pause over here. And then I'm going to copy over the contents of this and I'm going to explain. Well, we're basically going to send a system message for this particular player. That literally just means that we're outputting something into the chat. And what we're outputting is a literal component and that is going to be found. And then we translate the name of the block over here. So this is going to be, if we find iron ore, then it's going to say iron space ore. 
at. And then here, we're just writing out the position in a nice way, basically. That is awesome. Then outside of the for loop, I just want to say, hey, if we have not found any block, right? So if we say found block is false over here, then I also want to output something just so that the player has some feedback. Always quite important that the player gets feedback. So you once again want to send a system message. And here, for example, we can say component literal, and we can say something like no valuables found. And that is pretty awesome. One last thing, we also want to damage this item so that it can break. So to do this, we're going to say pcontext.getItemInHand.hurt and break. We're going to hurt this by the amount of one. We're going to pass in pcontext.getPlayer. Then after the first closing parenthesis, we're going to start typing player. And you can see it suggests to us the consumer of player over here. And we're just going to hit the tab key to autocomplete. And we'll say player.broadcast break event passing in player.getUsedItemHand. And this is going to also damage the item stack in our hand that we're basically using here. And that is one example of a custom item class. I highly recommend if you're interested in taking a look at some vanilla stuff, you can also click on the item over here and press Control H to have access to all of the different vanilla item classes. You can double click on them, take a look at any one of them and how they work and what they do. Some of them might be complicated. Some of them might not be too complicated. What you of course need is going to be Java knowledge. That is always the case. The thing I say until you listen to me and actually take a look at Java, because for example, maybe you're like, you know what? I really want to create something that does exactly the same thing as a snowball. Here is a snowball item. Congratulations. But regardless of this, Let's go to the mod items class and actually register our item because, well, we haven't done anything with our custom class, which you can see by the fact that it is gray over here, meaning that the constructor is not called. What does that mean? Well, if we were to, for example, duplicate our raw sapphire over here, and we're going to rename this to the metal underscore detector, and of course, changing the name here, very important, metal, metal underscore detector, then what we're going to do is you, you might be like, oh, now we've created this. No, 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 look at this new item. And here, it's still gray. When you make a custom item class, you want to make sure that you also call this. So this needs to be a new metal detector item. Double check once again in the custom item class. If this is yellow, there we go, it's called. If this is white, this is called. You can also middle mouse button click on this, and it should bring you straight to the mod items class if you've actually created one of those items. And then for the item properties here, in this case, we want to give it some durability because in this case, well, I want this to be able to break. So let's give it 100 durability so we can right click with this 100 times until the item is going to break. The translation should be very self-explanatory, similar to adding it to the creative mode tab. There we go. In the item model JS file, also no worries at all. Let's add the texture as well. There we go, the metal underscore detector. And those are going to be all of the things that we're going to need for the metal detector to work. So let's go into the game and see working. All right, find ourselves back in Minecraft and we can see the metal detector has been added. And let's just see if we can find ourselves some valuables. Sometimes you need quite a while until you actually find something, but usually at some point you should be able to find something. And there we go. There's some iron ore right here. Where, where, where is it? There it is. So it's at 89, 32 and 18. So absolutely spectacular. And if we continue to search, we will also be able to find at some point some diamond ore. That is, of course, vastly rarer. So it's going to take a while. But there we go. Though I actually found some diamond ore here, right here. So there you go. That is absolutely amazing. And of course, if we keep right clicking, at some point, our item is going to break. So that is a custom advanced item for you. Right, that's already it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about a custom advanced block. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.